Your unique story. Our global audience. Global One Media. Hello and welcome to another episode of our Stocks to Watch series from Global One Media, where we speak with senior leaders of companies across the board to help you, our viewers, make informed and intelligent investment decisions. I am Munir Barazi, your business analyst and host. And today I am pleased to welcome Ian L. Patterson, the CEO of Plurilock Security, a cybersecurity company with a unique zero trust approach and cutting edge technology to protect organizations and individuals from cyber threats. Hello, Ian. Thank you for joining us today. Great to be here, Manir. So as a CEO of a cybersecurity company, you're regularly confronted with threats and attacks on the digital front lines. How has artificial intelligence altered the nature of the threat landscape based on your experience? You know, Manir, it's actually really interesting. I, I, I've been speaking extensively with our customers over the last, uh, the last several weeks. And we're really there. We're only talking about one thing, which is what is the new normal look like, given that we are entering the age of AI. And I think the the commonality that I'm hearing from our customers, really across industries, including financial services, healthcare, government, is that there's a lot of uh, fear and uh, and unknown about what AI means. I'll give you some specific examples. I think most people are familiar with. Uh, you know, with AI being able to uh, imitate or fake uh, being another person. As an example, having a deep fake using somebody else's voice, but creating the text that that voice uses. That's now possible today uh, for, for fairly cheap. Um, I'm sure, maybe the, the movie industry could have done that five years ago. Um, but it wasn't something that the average attacker has accessible to them. Now they do. And so that means that phishing attacks, that means that uh, uh, deep fakes are now uh, much cheaper and much easier and much more convincing by the bad guys. So AI is almost an enabler for attackers to be better at what they do. Now, at the same time, AI is also enabling the defenders to work better, to do more with less people, to really quickly be able to analyze thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of events surface which ones to look at and then focus on those. So I think that there's going to be change really across the board, both for the bad guys as well as the good guys. And everybody in the industry uh, has a very keen eye as we watch these changes unfold. So the we have more sophisticated attacks and also more sophisticated defenses, as I understand. And you mentioned that those aren't necessarily new types of threats, but um, do you feel that they are new types of threats? And what does this imply for organizations trying to protect themselves? How does the cybersecurity function if an organization need to address this? So it's a good question. I, I think that there's uh, an evolution of threats. It's not necessarily new threats, but I think we're seeing a, an evolution or a sophistication of threats taking place. We've always had uh, spam emails. We've always had phishing emails. But usually, you know, when you and or I, when you or I get uh, an email supposedly from DocuSign or from SharePoint, right? We're, we're usually able to spot the the spelling mistakes, and it, it doesn't really look like it should. And I think now what we're going to see is that those are going to be much harder to disambiguate between what's real versus what's not. I also think, though, that what this means is that we're going to need a, a new uh, set of tools. You know, I think I think AI is the next gold rush um, and that there's there's going to be a lot of tools that need to be developed for the for organizations to be able to defend against these threats. You know, we, we need a new set of, of shovels and pickaxes to be able to spot, uh, defend against, uh, and potentially remediate from uh, these new types of AI threats. So there's a lot of focus right now on this problem, and there's a lot of um, conversation around how to defend against these threats. I'll give you some practical examples, um, you know, with, with regards to um, organizations who are using AI inside their business, maybe not in the security portion, but for instance, maybe in the sales and marketing department or in the accounting department or in the HR department. Um, these departments are also seeing 
uh, 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 disruption and uh, and a desire to use AI technologies. And the security teams are are somewhat um, um, unprepared to be able to help those departments secure their AI usage. So I think we're going to see a lot of change in the space. So let's talk about Plurilock's role in all of this. You mentioned that organizations need new sets, uh, a new set of uh, tools uh, to fight uh, against those new cyber threats. Tell us about how uh, Plurilock can help those organizations uh, really fight on those digital front lines. So we've come out with a, a set of guidance around the policies that organizations should take with regards to AI usage. Uh, so we've actually published a, a, a free uh, template um, around an AI governance document. So this is something that uh, larger businesses um, should consider putting in place, which would govern the, the use of AI tools inside organizations. And so some of the risks from using AI inside organizations is um, it the, the that usage could incur risk from uh, from accidental or intentional data leakage that might take place. So that's one of the things. I think one of the other things that that we're seeing a lot of is how to um, how to get awareness of what AI tools are being used inside organizations. So from a from a, a strategic lens, the the three pillars that that we're recommending are put some governance in place to. Uh, set the appropriate policies of what organizations should allow or should not allow. So that's the first part. And, and again, we've published a, a, a free template that, that organizations can use. The second is putting monitoring in place, really just to get a, an idea of what actually is happening um, inside the organization with regards to AI usage. Um, I'll give you a, a comparison very quickly. When, uh, when the iPhone first came out, organizations were very quick to say, you're not allowed to use it. You have to use company-owned devices. Um, but practically speaking, uh, everybody was using their, their iPhone and their smartphone. So the second pillar uh, of what our recommendations include are to put monitoring in place to be able to just gain awareness of what actually is happening. And then the third pillar is where you have usage that is approved by the organization and you know what's happening. Um, put some guardrails in place uh, with regards to protecting the users from accidentally making a mistake or from intentionally making uh, 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 creating damage. So those are the three pillars that we're recommending and, and we're actively working with our customers today uh, to be able to, uh, to safely use AI inside their business. So these are all very important and positive uh, steps that you're doing to educate uh, organizations about how they can protect themselves. But um, can we also talk about your technology and how it's able to um, combat and 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 uh, prevent attackers uh, from uh, making a lot of damage? Well, it's a good question. I mean, one of the things that I have to remind people about is that Pluralock actually was founded on artificial intelligence. We started uh, with a unique capability of identifying people based on their behavior. Uh, specifically, we're looking at how they type on the keyboard, how they move the mouse. We can use that form of behavioral biometrics. Crucially, we do that continuously. So it's not just when you first log on to a computer, it's actually continuously throughout the day. Um, and so that's a form of artificial intelligence that's providing defensive capabilities. Now, the, the, the use case why you would want to use that technology um, is to defend against identity attacks. So Gartner, uh, the analyst firm, has actually come out with a new segment for this part of the industry. They're, they're calling it Identity Threat Detection and Response, ITDR. Pluralock is a leader in this space. And we're it's, it's a recognition of the fact that bad guys uh, are, are not trying to pierce firewalls necessarily. They're really just going straight after the credentials. They want to attack your account. They want to take that over because once they have your account, they're able to, to steal data, deploy ransomware, extort companies, etc. So Pluralock is uniquely positioned to provide that level of continuous authentication with our patented technology. Uh, technology is actively in use today. Um, I was actually speaking to one of our, our large financial institution customers um, just a couple of weeks ago who has uh, relayed a story that um, they had deployed our software. Um, it was specifically protecting work from home 
uh, uh, users, so employees who were who were not in the office, and uh, they indicated that um, uh, an employee had logged in a couple hours later. Um, system uh, actually locked and sent an alert to the security team. Security team investigated, had a conversation with the employee. As it turned out, uh, the employee was not on that device. It was actually one of their kids who had who had jumped on. Um, now, that's exactly what we expect the system to do. It recognized that there was an unauthorized person. In this case, it was one of the kids. Uh, it, it successfully locked. It prevented uh, data from being accessed or systems being accessed. Now, that's a pretty benign example, um, you know, but that's also the same uh, use case that we would expect. To, that's the same impact that we would expect if it was somebody uh, unauthorized, uh, a bad guy who had somehow gotten access to that account. So, um, so that's how we're using artificial intelligence today uh, to defend against these types of attacks. Wonderful. And and as you said, I can imagine that there are less benign examples that you are protecting uh, organizations uh, for. Uh, any final thoughts uh, or insights you want to share with uh, not only customers, but uh, also investors, though those that have already invested and those that are still making their decision? So what I would say is is stay tuned. This is a very quickly changing industry. and. Uh, I would say that uh, Plurlock has a number of initiatives that we're not quite ready to talk about yet, um, but I think will be quite exciting for, for folks when they see. Uh, and so I would encourage everybody to sign up for our investor updates. Uh, if you go to Plurlock.com, go to the investor section uh, and sign up for the updates. Um, then that way you'll be able to get uh, get notified in real time uh, when when these announcements are made. Wonderful. Ian L. Patterson, the CEO of Pluralock Security, thank you so much for joining us today. Pluralock is publicly traded on the TSX Venture Exchange as PLUR, on the OTCQB as PLCKF, and on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange as 659. Thank you so much, Ian, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, Peter.